right, so we're back. Uh, it is a real cold day out there. We, we were 19 degrees when we left this morning. I'm not sure it's much much warmer now. It might be 20. You, yeah, <laughs> you, know, you know when the salt water is freezing on the back of the boat, it's cold. But nonetheless, Mike, we got into some awesome stripers out there. We've got some good ones. We've got a lot of medium-sized ones, a couple of really, really good ones. So thank you for that. Yep. It was a oh, great, my pleasure. great day. Oh, it, was, it was absolutely a great day. When we were out there, we were talking about how you set up your boats and electronics wise, transducer wise. And so I thought it would be great now that we're pulled sure. out of the water. Let's have a look. And why don't you just run us through a okay. couple of what you've got and, and why you have them where you do. Down here at the TM150, medium chirp. You'll see I have the big wedge in here. Not only do I mark my or mount my transducers lower, but I'll use the larger wedges to start. I don't mind if it's down a little low and throwing up a rooster tail. I mount my transducers aggressively. I want them to be in the water. I know the old saying, they're a skimmer and not a plow. I don't mind if they plow a little bit. Also, if you see with the with the, uh, the wedge here, it tilts the transducer down in the back. The following edge is lower. and increases the pressure across the face of the transducer, which will help get at any uh, residual bubbles. And it also slightly looks forward. Okay. And it does two things. It increases the pressure across the bottom face yep. of, the, of the transducer, no air. So you get those great returns when you're running, you never lose bottom. And it actually looks forward slightly. So when you pull up on that school, you see it immediately. Right. You see it quite a bit quicker. And the deeper you go, the further forward it's looking. Right on. So it's, it's nothing new, you know. I just like to go a little bit lower, and I don't mind towing it the back end down, the following edge yep. down a little bit. Now, if it's so down, that you're getting half arches, you know, like really cutting half arches. Right. If you want to go ahead and put the smaller wedge or remove the wedge, yeah, go for a, it and it's see how that works. Yeah, sure. It's adjustable, right. so you can go out and, and mess around with it, come back, make changes to it, and right. try, it, try right. a different angle. Yep. Now it's a kick up bracket. It is low below the boat. If it hits something, it'll kick up. No damage done. All right, moving over here to the big boy. This is the TM275 low high wide transducer. Same thing, it's a kick up bracket. It will kick up if I hit something. I don't have the wedge here, but this really looks forward already without the wedge. So I didn't need the wedge for this, this mountain right here. It is below the boat a little bit. The entire thing is below the boat. Some people mount them um, you know, parallel with the bottom and when you get on plane, it'll sink the transducer. Man, if you can get good returns like that, go for it. Again, I like to be aggressive. I like to put them below the boat, tilt them forward a little bit again. <laughs> Increases the pressure again across the face, gets that little residual air out, and it's a larger transducer. It's up a little further, and it's a little more important to have that. You can see I like trans transom out transducers. I've had in hull, I've had through hull, I've had everything. The big yellow box, you know, the the large hole in the bottom for the the through hull, so you can trailer a boat with it. They're all great transducers, but I'm not afraid of a transom mount. You know, I can adjust them a little more. I just like them. Airmar makes the best stuff in the world, and until someone makes something better, I don't see why I'd ever use anything other than an Airmar transducer. Like we say, you know, there, there's some rules rules to follow when you're installing transducers, especially transom mount transducers. Make sure that there, there are no water intakes in front of the transducer that are going to cause aeration to come to, to blow by it. Make sure you're in clean water. But like like Mike just said. He's, he's willing to try something, be a little more aggressive, put transducers on the transom that are gonna perform when he's at maybe a slower speed. Um, so he doesn't have all of that aeration coming over the way you would at high right, speed. Right, sure. So. Rougher water too, you'll, you'll get no aeration, rougher water if you put them a little lower. Yep. Uh, it's not, you might put up a little bit of a, a rooster tail. Yep. I'd rather have more fish at the end of the day. Thank you, Mike Smedley. Oh, my pleasure. Team Old School Stripers, check them out on YouTube. They got great videos out there showing the comparisons between chirp and non-chirp transducers. And check them out. Thanks for joining us. And I fish with a lot of people. This guy knows his stuff. He's an actual fisherman, a guy who boats and uses this stuff. I do my best. I'm telling you. <laughs> Thanks.